see a bunch of uh, uh, think news articles that were printed uh, against me by the Torrington Register and the Waterbury Republican who slandered my name on uh, four false arrests that I've been a victim of and uh, it gets a pretty good story from there so but anyways yeah the wolf's eyes are on you the sheeple and it's we the people I should have wrote I should have wrote that down on a sign it would have gone, gone uh, well with the with I got the some good news for you what's that first of all oh, for, first of all forget <laughs> about the federal candidates Murphy oh. Uh, SD, all those oh, people. Oh, For, forget about them. Worthless. Next year, we're going to concentrate solely on the state reps, state senators. We can't. We can't expect South Carolina, Texas, Tennessee, New Hampshire to help us in the state. We've got to help ourselves. Amen. And the way to do that is to flip the uh, general assembly. We have to work. I attended a um, a workshop meeting in uh, uh, Killingly last night, right on the. You could you could walk, literally walk to the uh, Rhode Island border, and they've got 60 people already in place as motivated volunteers to help whomever they can find as a candidate to run against Donald Williams, who's the nice. head of the state senate for the Democrats. They've set up an infrastructure. They're they're working on recruiting candidates. They're not going to let the Republican Party pick their candidate. They're going to when the when the when the caucus comes in time to select the candidate, 29th district, they're going to have their own candidate, and they're in the process of finding that person right now. And um, huh. I've got a video in this camera from last night. The leader is a guy named uh, Duffy Definius, yeah. and he suggests everybody in the state on our side, which should be everybody, that um, we all set up groups like that across state and all the 36 state senate districts so you're in uh you're in 64th right but you're in uh connecticut you're in uh chaplain's chat you're in chaplain's um senate district that took over for Rohrbeck, right uh yeah i i lost track of who took over for him it's all so corrupt Rohrbeck and i go back way back in torrington i i, I go back many several years of, of government corruption with hud eeoc Governor Malloy's implicated in this, Jepson, the whole uh, Democratic, I call them union thugs. Um, worthless, worthless. We're back and I go back because I worked for the Torrington Housing, Municipal Housing Authority for um, six and a half years managing 428 units of um, HUD public housing. Blew the whistle, by the way. I happen to have a whistle here. <laughs> oh, I love whistles. Um, I blew the whistle on uh, government corruption, and they've been coming after me ever since I threatened my legitimate lawsuit, which is my right <coughs> um, to sue them for the discrimination and harassment and reta illegal retaliation and everything else I've been a victim of. That uh, the phony baloney Connecticut Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities. Three cases, three complaints through these clowns. The Department of Labor, they're all a bunch of crooks. And these people will not do an honest story about them. I brought in um, document after document after document. I've got uh, complaints going all the way to President Obama, who he himself in an email wrote me and told me to uh, contact the Justice Department. Well, I've done that, Justice Department. And where the heck are you on my FOI request that I just sent out? Um, yeah. I sent out a, a oh, shot out a letter like May 20th, 2011. Um, in July of 2011, then Congressman Chris Murphy promised me his help at a domestic violence forum that I went to um, at Susan B. Anthony. He reached out to me and came, oh, here, here's your case assignment. And um, uh, I had already been falsely arrested once after I went to city council and um, spoke out about against the illegal retaliation and the fraud at the Municipal Housing Authority of Torrington and the thugs that run it. Now, why, why were you arrested? It's all part of the retaliation of me speaking out against a, a phony baloney Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities withdraw agreement that they farted out and called justice over two years after I was illegally fired in um, uh, Torrington, um, brought a case against the CHRO, like, you know, the way that you think that the system is supposed to work for you. It took them almost two and a half years just to schedule the mandatory fact-finding conference because CHRO is a big bag of shit. 
They don't do anything. Um, now, what is the acronym? What do the letters stand for? Shit. No, no. Uh, oh, Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities. Well, listen. <laughs> In a lot of ways, so when what it comes to our government, those letters are, 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 are interchangeable. Well, Commission on Human Rights and Opportunities means nothing of what they, they claim to do on their website. For example, when you Google my name, the, one of the things will come up with the CHRO dismissal of my whistleblower complaint. Municipal public housing authorities in the state of Connecticut are considered non-federal, non-state, and non-city employees were considered employees of what is called a public um, body corporation. And for some reason, despite my exhaustive efforts to go to every one of our legislatures and have this piece of legislation changed, both, both the state and federal level, so that municipal public housing authorities do indeed get um, both state, federal um, protection against illegal retaliation, and that is a uh, common uh, practice under all EEOC, um, Department of Labor, um, Civil Rights, uh, fair housing rights is that it's illegal to retaliate against anybody making fair housing and EEOC. And CHRO is a state fraud against the taxpayer that claims to um, uh, enforce the federal and state laws that protect people um, under the anti-discrimination and um, fair civil rights and they don't do any of that thing and they're getting ready to have a lawsuit because I'm, I'm filing this week before the end of the month there will be a federal lawsuit called Bagnashi versus State of Connecticut and it's a uh, color of law civil rights violation and four false arrests two false imprisonments you wouldn't believe what the state of Connecticut has done oh to I me. know I, I they've criminalized me they're doing it to people throughout the country they're doing it for whistleblowers it, they're doing it to people right now I know, I know of a case that could be a Pulitzer Prize winning um, yeah. a reporter could, could take it and make a really good story out of it. Uh, young fellows being railroaded in a kangaroo court at a college in uh, Enfield uh, for a false accusation. Yeah. And his hearing is on Monday. He's not allowed an attorney. He's not allowed what? a court reporter to take the tr exact transcripts. They will not allow the hearing to be recorded. What do you think of that? You think that's Soviet Union? Who's, who's, uh, yeah, we, we have big problems in this country. Very crazy. big problems. And I've been uh, uh, whistleblowing on them for many, many years. And um, I, I know of a, a, a lot of cases of innocent um, reporters and journalists that are, are, are jailed um, and uh, um, we need to bring attention to this and make these wise guys <coughs> well, that, that's why that's why doing. these people won't touch it because they're afraid they're uh, afraid well yes they should be because like I said I, like the, I, I gotta write this down I think it's pretty catchy don't you the wolves eyes are, are on you um, sheeple we the people these are a bunch of sheeple you know what I mean and and we the people are are the wolves that are taking our country back from these socialist uh, uh, <laughs> tyranny that's the only way that you can describe it it's 